Remember that song? Say it again. It's like, no, you're gonna <laughs> film it. It's a dirty trick, Erica. I get questions all the time about how do I cook in the cold or how do I cook under adverse conditions? And usually my advice to people cooking on offset smokers is in the cold, you shouldn't have any worries at all because the difference in temperature between the air inside the cook chamber and the air outside is gonna be even greater, which means that your smoker should draw even better than it normally would. And thinking about that question got me to realize that I'd always assumed that the collector is gonna help with airflow when I've never actually tested it because there could be some reason why it doesn't make a difference. There could be some reason why it does, but we really don't know until we give it a test. So what I'm gonna do to test this today is pretty simple. I'm gonna run the smoker at 250, just like normal, and then I'm gonna run it at 250 with the edges of the collector blocked with aluminum foil so the air can't flow through those pockets and instead we'll just come straight out and then straight up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have that center gauge at 250 both times, but I'm gonna put four digital probes inside the smoker to see if the heat is distributed differently. In addition, I'm gonna use a thermal camera to see the heat distribution on the outside of the smoker to see if it changes when I block off part of that collector. Now my hypothesis on this is that the rate of airflow out of the stack is gonna be really just determined by the temperature of the air inside the cook chamber and the diameter and height of the stack, which will not change. I don't think the collector is gonna make much of a difference, but I could be completely wrong because there could be things that I'm not even considering. But again, we're not gonna know until we test it, so I'm gonna light a fire in this thing and we'll get started. Okay. All right. Ready? Is it hot in the cook chamber? Okay, we got the smoker up to temperature, so I'm gonna take these four digital thermometer probes, put them inside to see how the heat's distributed. Also, we're gonna take a look at the thermal camera to see if there are any hot spots, cool spots, just to see how the heat's distributed you know, on the outside surface of the cook chamber. And then we're gonna let this thing cool down and repeat the process the exact same way, but with the collector blocked off of some aluminum foil so that the air can only come out and then straight back up. All right, here we go. Okay, so we have our temperatures here. On this side at the top, we have 267.2. On the bottom, we have 260.7. Up top on the left side, we have 247.9. And on the bottom, 237.0. So about a 30 degree difference from the hottest part to the coolest part. And now it's time to take a look at the thermal camera to see if we see any differences on the outside surface rather than just what we're seeing as a snapshot on the inside. I wanna give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. One of my New Year's goals was to lose weight and Magic Spoon is helping me do just that. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos for a long time, you know that when I started making videos, I weighed a lot less than I do now. Magic Spoon is a high protein, low carb, keto friendly, zero grams of sugar, gluten free, grain free cereal. Basically, it's a way to eat food that you love without having to feel guilty about it. My 18 month old daughter prefers Magic Spoon to the cereal that we were giving her. When we gave her the Cocoa Magic Spoon cereal, she kept saying, more chocolate, more chocolate. She loves it. If you wanna get healthier this year, the great news is that Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four grams of net carbs in each serving. That's only 140 calories per serving. So click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today to help you accomplish your health goals in the new year. You can build your very own variety box and use my code MSBBQ for $5 off. You can choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and maple waffle flavors, plus other awesome flavors including blueberry and my favorite, cinnamon. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the code MSBBQ for $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com forward slash MSBBQ to save $5 off your order today. Also, for my Canadian and British viewers, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK. All right, guys, here's my attempt to film. I never film, so... It's not perfect. You can obviously see that the firebox is much warmer 
and then a slow gradation from the right side to the left. It looks like it gets a little cooler. And then as it moves up the stack, you see that the temperature goes down even a little bit more. So kind of exactly what we would expect. There are no you know, hot spots, no cold spots, except right in the center there, like on the left side, there may be a little bit of a cold spot. I don't know if that's just some kind of artifact of, I don't know, some something that's on the surface, but we see some clear differences there. On the right side next to the firebox, it's given me about 50, hmm, between 55 and 60 degrees Celsius. On the left side, it's given me on the outside surface about 42, 43 degrees Celsius. At the bottom of the stack, it's giving me a temperature of hmm, 47, 48 degrees Celsius. At the top of the stack, it's giving me a temperature of 26 point or 27 degrees Celsius. So there's some differences there. You can see that the exhaust gases are coming out and it's giving a little bit of heat, but let's get closer. Let's see how much heat is leaking. First from the top on that flat top, lots of heat coming out there. Then we have this little spout and you see that there is some heat leaving, not a ton. And then as we move across, and this is adjusting, we see that the whole thing is hot. And this is that one spot, I don't know why, but it just looks like it's a little bit cooler. Who knows? And this is a close up of the stack. You can see where the heat is coming from. And there's heat kind of preserved in the middle there. And then at the bottom of the stack, moving up, this is kind of what we're seeing is the temperature difference. And you can kind of see a little bit of that smoke and heat leaving. So top of the stack, we're right at about 28, 29 degrees Celsius. At the bottom of the stack, six, uh, between 55 and 60. So that's kind of where we are. And it's interesting. Let's see if we can find anything out about this firebox here. You'll see on the bottom, it looks cooler. It's 90... 89, 90 degrees Celsius. In the middle on the side, it's 100 something degrees Celsius. On the top, it's 128, 130 degrees Celsius. And from the top side looking down, 150 plus. So extremely hot. So it's bleeding heat from the top, but maintaining heat on the bottom because of the semi-insulated nature of this firebox on the bottom side. So interesting things. Let's block off that stack and see what's different. So to sum things up, with this configuration, pretty much exactly what we expected. About a 30 degree difference from the hottest part of the smoker to the coolest part of the smoker, but all of that is brisket weather. And then a slow gradation of heat being hottest next to the firebox and then coolest next to the stack. The temperature is hottest at the bottom of the stack, cooler at the top of the stack. So pretty much exactly what we would expect. Now the real question is, how are things going to be different when we pack the collector full of foil so that the air can only travel out and up? Is there going to be a difference at all? Let me know in the comments now what you think the difference is going to be, if any. Okay, we've let this thing cool off and I pulled the stack off of this thing. Now we're going to pack that collector with some aluminum foil to block some airflow and then we're going to repeat the process exactly like before. All right. Okay, that's my best approximation using some aluminum foil. So I'm gonna get the stack back on and then light up a fire. You know, sometimes barbecue is a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. Here we go.
Okay, let's go over the temperatures we have here. So at the top right here, we have 276.1. At the bottom, 272.2. Uh, at the top over here, we have 251.3, and on the bottom, we have 241.9. So not a huge temperature difference, not really appreciably different from the temperatures that we got before. Now, one thing that I do want to mention is when I was heating this thing up, when I was lighting the logs, and this thing was really hot, like 400 plus degrees, I noticed that the difference in temperature between this side and this side was smaller than when the stack collector was just like normal. So that's something that also happens if you just use the damper on the stack and close it down a little bit and restrict airflow. So I think for normal cooking temperatures, what I found is that the temperatures that are distributed inside the smoker are unaffected by putting stuff in the collector. But when there's lots of air going through and that air is very hot, it seems that the collector actually does improve the airflow. Now here's the thing you always want the option to have more airflow, and then you can dial it down with the damper. But what you can't do is fix something when you don't have enough airflow. So dialing a damper down is super easy, but when you're in a situation where you need more airflow and you can't get it, and the smoker doesn't draw well, doesn't burn clean, and you're fighting with it the whole time, that's the worst possible scenario. So do I think collectors make a difference? Mm, it looks like they probably do, but is it enough of a difference for the average backyard smoker to make a difference? Yeah, I don't really think so. But let's take a look at the thermal camera to see if there's any kind of difference that we can see there. All right, here's just an interesting thing for you guys. The semi-insulated bottom of the firebox is obviously extremely hot. And so I think that's what helps with the coal bed and lighting the next log. The walls are very hot, you know, in comparison to everything outside. Like the smoker is hot right now, but that cook chamber is a lot cooler. But right here, you see all that retained heat. It is extremely hot on that bottom side. And I think that really helps with the combustion of the logs. So interesting thing to note. I'll be using this camera a lot more in the future, but I just like playing with it now. All right, let's see. We're picking up right side, about 54, 55 degrees Celsius. Left side, 35-ish, 33, 4, 5 degrees Celsius. Bottom of the stack low 40s top of the stack uh, getting about 20 it's changing a lot maybe 25 28 degrees celsius a little brighter on the right side because a little hotter but generally pretty evenly distributed across okay after taking a look at the thermal camera i don't really see anything different but this isn't a perfect test. A perfect test would be I cut the whole stack and collector off and I just put a straight pipe out and straight pipe up on there. But this is the best we can do. But the question, do I notice a difference with the stack collector kind of blocked off and with it completely open? I think maybe a little bit, but I think what's more important than having a collector is having a stack of sufficient diameter and height to have really good draw. Now I think the collector helps, but probably for most backyard smokers, if you have a great stack, the collector isn't super important. But if you're trying to get from say 98% to 100% of the maximum possible airflow, well then yeah, I think it might help. But if that's gonna be the decision between one smoker and another, I don't think it really matters. Look more at the stack than whether or not it has a collector. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I was gonna do some more filming today, but as you can see, the weather's not really cooperating. And I also wanna give a shout out to all the people who joined me on the Zoom call, on Patreon, got a chance to interact with people, just hang out and answer some barbecue questions. It was super cool. If you guys wanna check that out, just go over to patreon.com and look for Mad Scientist BBQ. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time. Is measure the temperature, uh, okay. If the collector was used, okay, okay, all right. And then we're gonna, all these snowflakes. Now, the real question is, now the real question is, the real question is how is this going to be different when we apply, I can't say it, here we go.